Good afternoon, folks. It's been a few days since the last time we talked. It's almost Christmas time. So, happy Hanukkah, happy birthday, no, happy, yeah, happy birthday, Jesus, Merry Christmas, and Feliz Navidad. Was it happy Hanukkah? Is that okay to say that? I don't know if that's, yeah, people say that, right? Okay, but so, uh, now that I got all that crap out of the way, we can talk about some some real stuff. I've got some emails here. Uh, it was, uh, I guess we can call this a this and that, T A T. I think this will be T A T number 11. Probably be the last one for this year, too. So, as soon as I come back, we'll get started. Hey! Oh, Rocket Chick. Hello there. So, I have so much to talk about. I don't know if I'm going to get it all covered in this video today. I got an email from Rosa a few days ago. Actually, it's been, it was the 16th of December. Sorry, Rosa, it's taken so long, but I did answer you. I, I, I responded to Rosa in the email and answered her questions in detail. And I thought I would share these questions and these answers with you folks. Some of this stuff I've talked about before. Y'all you know you're going to think, Don, you already covered that. Why are you talking about it again? But it, it bears repeating because some people are not listening and not paying attention to me. They're going off and paying somebody else on some other website or YouTube channel for their information and spending their money. So anyway, here it goes. Uh, hello, Don. I, I, I'm going to read a lot of this to you, and, and I'm actually going to read my answers, and then I'll elaborate. I've been watching your... And I think we're having an earthquake. I just heard some really deep rumbling, but I didn't feel anything. I heard... Stuff. Well, false alarm. I'll know I have, I'll, in a few minutes I'll check my phone and see. We've had a lot of little shakers here recently. We had three one morning, two I felt that were within 30 minutes of each other. So I'm a little sensitive to Hearing stuff like that, as you can probably figure out, I don't like earthquakes. I'm I'm not going to get used to it. So, but anyway, okay. So, hello, Don. I have been watching YouTube videos, your YouTube videos, and I have subscribed right away. Well, of course. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. They are very informative. I enjoy watching them, especially when you put a touch of your particular sense of humor. I laughed a lot in the video. Walk to the mall. In Monte, and you named the place Honkendor. <laughs> yeah, it it's still is. Okay, after this little uh, introduction, I have some questions. My husband and I, after almost a year from taking the decision, are moving to this, in, this March 2023 to Cuenca. We are downsizing, selling our apartment in Florida, and putting the rest of our stuff in storage in case we change our mind once the honeymoon is over, like you suggested. See, folks, some people are listening, okay? This is a good idea. If you can afford to do that, if you can put your essential stuff in storage, maybe even your car, you know, put it in storage. Plan on keeping it in storage for a year. Find yourself a good rate on a long-term storage. Put it in a climate-controlled storage space and leave it there for a year. Because when you get here, you will go through this honeymoon period and it will end, okay? You'll get through the honeymoon and things will change. I'm not saying for the worse. I'm not saying that you won't like it, but you will get through this, this period of 
Well, you'll wake up one day and you say, now what? Okay? The excitement's kind of calmed down. The honeymoon is over. And now you got to really start figuring out what you want to do with your life. Now that you're in another country. So, that's good thinking. My answer to Rosa was, that's good thinking. I'm curious to know if you made an exploratory trip. Cuenca is a great choice for expats as long as you can handle the altitude and somewhat cooler temperatures. Remember, Cuenca is at 8,300 feet AMSL. That's uh, above mean sea level for those of you that don't know. But Cuenca is a wonderful place to be, and I will go far enough to say that it's probably the best place in Ecuador to live in. If you come here, you like it, and you decide to make it your home, then you can go back and liquidate your, your stuff that's in your storage. So, I, I did, folks, I didn't make an exploratory trip. I tell people I'm still on it. I've been here going on 19 months now, and I'm still on my exploratory trip. I, I couldn't, I didn't have time, didn't really want to spend the money to come here for, you know, a real exploratory trip. In my opinion, a, a real exploratory trip of, of Ecuador, you need to be here at least 30 days. Okay, in my opinion, come here and stay in an Airbnb or stay in a hostel. Get a hostel with a private room. They're better, you know, and explore. Ecuador is no bigger than the size of Arizona. And you, you can cover a lot of territory in 30 days. You rent a car. Come here and rent a car. I don't advise that. But you got, I, I actually don't rent. I don't advise renting a car. But come here, hire a driver. Juan Zambrano or McGill or any of the people that he is uh, networked with and travel around. Get on the buses. The buses go everywhere here from city to city and you, it's cheap travel. I'm talking less than $10. You can go from Monta to Waikil for seven bucks on a very nice comfortable bus that probably has Wi-Fi. So, do the exploratory trip if you can afford it. Put your stuff in storage if you can afford it. And then come here and check it out. And if you like it and if it's for you, give yourself some time. Give yourself a year. At least a year to see if you like it. Okay? Excuse me. We also did just... We also... Rosa continues. We also just did December 10th. Oh, my birthday. Did you... You celebrated my birthday by getting your fingerprints. I'm so happy for you. She got her fingerprints, FBI report, state police report. I know the FBI report needs to be apostilled, but does the police report need to be apostilled as well? Yes. We want to have all of our documents ready when we apply for an investment visa in Cuenca. Folks, get everything apostilled. The, the most important documents that you're going to be required to provide for your visa it's going to be your FBI background check, and it cannot be more than six months old. Now, there may have been some changes. That's why I always say, talk to an immigration lawyer. You don't have to hire one, but talk to one. Send an email to them. Talk to Gringo Visas, Mate Duran at Gringo Visas, or talk to my friend Marcos over at Equisys here in Monta. Gringo Visas and Equisys have offices in here and in Cuenca. And Quito. I don't know if Gringo or Gringo Beach has an office in Quito. I don't think. I think they're only in Cuenca and here in Monte. But ask questions and ask them, you know, and, and then you can make a decision on who you want to hire to help you get your, your visa. My answer was, it's my understanding, and this is what I did, because that's the way I work this, folks. I tell you what I did and what worked for me and what didn't work. And that's, because you notice, I don't give advice. I do give some advice. I'm, I'm changing my ways, all right? I'm, I do give some advice. And it's always going to be the same advice. Consult a professional. Not on Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> all documentation from the U.S. needs to be apostilled. This is my understanding, okay? I had to get my FBI report, my state background report, in my Social Security Income Verified Letters, Apple Steel. So pay attention, folks. You have to have your income verification, 
I'm not saying your bank statements. You don't have to have your bank statements off of steel. But for those of you like me that are on Social Security and you have to have your Social Security verification letter, it has to be off of steel. It has to be authenticated. That's the whole purpose of doing this. They have to be, the, the process of being off of steel is the process of authenticating your documentation by a government agency, the local secretary of state or the department of state. And, or, and, and, or, 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 uh, you know what I'm saying. For your state background check, if your state uh, offers a state background check, Arizona doesn't. Arizona will not give a state background check for the purposes of immigration. So what you do in, instead is you get a letter from them stating that they don't give background checks and you get that letter off of steel at the Secretary of State in Arizona. And everything else goes to the U.S. Department of State in Virginia to get off of steel, like your FBI report and your Social Security verification. I went on to say, you're smart in planning on getting all that done before you come here because I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't smart. What happened, it, it's not so much that I wasn't smart because I am a pretty smart guy, but I, I started this whole process right in the middle of the pandemic. And so none of these offices were open. I couldn't walk into the State Department. I, I actually wanted to, since I worked for an airline, I was going to fly to Washington hop over to Virginia and go to the, to the U.S. Department of State and get my documentation off of steel on site. I could have done that. Same thing with the Secretary of State in Arizona. But, and the same thing with Social Security, but all these offices were closed. So I had to do everything by mail. And then, of course, you know, I had to get here. So I got here before my documentation did. Some of my documentation, okay, Seven pieces of paper cost me $110 to get DHL'd in here in Tomato so I could turn it over to Gringo Beaches and get everything taken care of. I went on to say, the best advice I can give you in that regard is to talk to your immigration attorney, whether it's Gringo Beaches or Equisys, and the reason why is because I've been told by a few other expats that they didn't have to have some of these documents. But that's hearsay. Okay, folks, I'm saying it's, that's hearsay. You know what they say about hearsay, all right? Especially from YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> immigration experts, you know, the YouTube and, and Facebook immigration experts. There's thousands of them out there. So find out from the experts and get it all in writing, okay? Rosa went on to say, I need to mention that we have real estate property income. Our tenants deposit the rent in our Chase and TD Bank accounts, and there's none of these two banks in Cuenca. So, how can we get access to this income while living in Cuenca? The same way I get access to my Social Security. I get it from the ATM machines. There's ATM machines all over the place, folks. The, any bank that you have in the United States can transfer money to Ecuador as long as the Ecuadorian bank is part of the SWIFT banking system. Now, in my case, I couldn't do that because I bank at Swab, but here in Ecuador, I bank at a co-op. I, I bank at JET, which is where I have my CDs, where I earn my 8% interest on my CDs. The co-op is like a credit union. They don't belong to the SWIFT banking system. So I couldn't do a transfer from Swab to JET directly. What I did was I did a domestic transfer in the United States from Swab to Bank of Pachincha in Miami. JET has a bank account at Bank of Pachincha. So Bank of Pachincha was able to do the transfer to JET. Now, if you don't understand that, back up. Rewind and listen to what I just said again, because I said it very clearly. Even without my teeth, I said it very clearly. Here's what I did. I had a TD Ameritrade account and I moved it to Swab. This, talk, this is what I, I, this is me answering Rosa. I also had a local credit union account that I closed and moved to Swab. I chose Swab because they pay all ATM fees. They are 
an investment house. They are international friendly and I have no issues with them whatsoever. <clears throat> there are ATMs everywhere here and that's how I get my money. I also opened a local bank account at Jet Cooperative and that's where I purchased my CDs. I earn 8% on my CDs and the interest earned is deposited monthly in my savings account at Jet. I have a Jet Visa debit card that I use for local purchases and that's all there is to it. There are other banks like Chase and Wells Fargo that I've been told will pay your ATM fees. If you open an Austro, that's a, there, right you see right here, Austro, Austro bank account in Cuenca, there are no ATM fees. I don't have any U.S. dollars deposited in my Ecuadorian bank account. Let me repeat that, folks. I don't have any money from the U.S. directly deposited to my bank account here in, in Ecuador. I don't do that. I'm not going to do that. Why should I? I have my Social Security is deposited directly to my Swab account in the United States. It's not that I don't trust the Ecuadorian banks. I do, but I do trust them. But if something happens and I want to go back to the United States and something catastrophic happens here economically and the company, the country collapses and the banking systems collapse, I don't want any problem getting my money. So I keep, that's my security blanket. I keep my, my income deposited to my bank account. Same thing for my YouTube income and same thing for another investment account I have. My Social Security and stateside income is all directly deposited in my Swab account, like I just said again. For larger purchases, you can always do wire transfers as long as you're banking at a bank here in Ecuador that, has a member of the, that is a member of the SWIFT banking system. When I need larger amounts of money sent to me, I do a domestic wire transfer in the States to Bank of Potential in Miami, and they do the transfer to my JIP account. That's all there is to it. I also use Zelle. Zelle is it's an app at Swab, and I actually pay my rent that way. I pay my rent to my landlord, who happens to be in Sarasota, Florida, I believe. It's in Florida, I know for sure. I think it's in Sarasota. And I pay her directly from Zelle, right out of my Swab uh, investment account. Her next question, do you know any expat that has rental income living in Ecuador? No, I don't, unfortunately, but I do know that people do that. There is a renter's visa you can get for people that live on rental income. I, I don't know anything about that. That's something you need to talk to your immigration attorney about. Her next question, do I need to close this account and open one in Charles Schwab? Well, you've heard what I said about that. Does this type of income qualify to apply for an investment visa? And I don't believe rental income will be used to qualify for an investment visa here. An investment visa here is where you bring money here, invest in CDs, or you buy property, or you buy land. You know, you invest in something here in Ecuador. Your rental income that you get in the United States, which by the way, folks, the rental income visa it's a very complicated process from my understanding. If you have a way out of it, I would do it. I would find another way. But I know that some people just can't do it, and I, I understand that. So she said, does this type of income qualify to apply for an investment visa? I said, that's a good question for your immigration attorney. They have so many different visas here. They actually have a renter's visa. But if you lose this rental income, you'll have to get a new visa. You understand? If you lose your rental income, you have to get a different visa. That's another reason why I didn't really want to get an investor's visa. I, I changed from an investor's visa to a pensioner's visa, but fortunately, I could do that because I have a pension. Then it qualified for the pensioner's visa. If you come here and you get an investor's visa and you that investment runs out, or you no longer have it, or you sell it, or whatever, Guess what, folks? You just lost your visa. The best, in my opinion, the best visa to get here is, for long term, is a pensioner's visa. But that's another video. Talk to your immigration attorney, please. Okay. And I said, in my answer to her, I said, 
You need to talk to an immigration attorney on this subject. So our next question was, and on the same lines, do we need to pay taxes to the Ecuadorian government out of this income? I, my answer was, that income is U.S. income and not earned. We're talking about her rental income here. That is U.S. income and not earned in Ecuador, so I wouldn't expect you to have to pay Ecuadorian taxes on income earned in the U.S. Again, please confirm with a tax specialist. Talk to a specialist, okay? I can tell you what I have done and how it worked for me. I try my best to avoid getting into tax discussions with my subscribers because I'm certainly not the expert on the matter. I know very little about tax matters. I know that if you come here and you buy CDs and you earn income on your CDs, you have to, once you reach a certain amount of income, you have to pay taxes on it. If you pay Ecuadorian taxes on it, which you will, you won't have to pay taxes on it in the United States, provided that you provide the correct documentation. There again, talk to you, the specialist. Talk to the tax accountant, the CPA, daddy who's an accountant, or whatever. Get the information from somebody that knows. Her next question, so we don't have Social Security retirement yet. I'm 54 and my husband is 55. Also, where do you get your wristband with all your information? She's talking about the wristband. I don't have it anymore. I got rid of it. I have a medical emergency card that I got here from Equosys. It costs 20 bucks. It has all my medical information on it, which is not a lot because I all I have is high blood pressure. But it tells who my doctor is, whether I'm insured, who my insurance company is, my full name, has my cellular number, cedula number on it, what my blood type is, and all that kind of stuff. And they give you a wristband that you can put on your wrist. It's a black rubber band that notifies any emergency personnel that you have this thing in your pocket. That's what she's talking about. You can get that from Equisist. I wrote, the wristband only indicates that you have a card in your pocket that has all my emergency information, contact information, medical stats needed by the healthcare Professionals, I don't wear it anymore because it was too tight. I carry, I do carry the card in my pocket. I got this at Equisys here in Monta. She went on to say, thank you in advance for trying to answer our annoying questions. Your questions, Rosa, are not annoying, okay? I think, I think you're a very generous and humble person. If you ever visit Cuenca again, and yes, I will, we would like to meet you and invite you out for lunch or dinner. I say it's my pleasure. After I get my car, I'll pay a visit and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's my questions to answer to quite Rose's questions. I hope you get something out of that. And I'm on to the next email. I got an email from Chris. I'm not going to read the whole email. Chris basically wanted to know, uh, she said, I was wondering what other expats do with their spare time in Ecuador. I'm primarily thinking of retired expats. I know a lot of expats still work at various jobs, full-time and part-time, and others are engaged in video production, photography, painting, etc. Now, I know what you're talking about. I was wondering if you know of any expats who engage in activities like woodworking, metalworking, ceramics, and other creative outlets. Are those types of activities available in the Monta area? Yes, they are. They're available anywhere in this country. Okay? <clears throat> I'm not going to mention his name. I, I, I have an acquaintance that I think moved to Cuenca from Houston. They brought a container in here and he brought his whole woodworking shop to Cuenca. I, I wish I could have done that. I love woodworking. And I would, it's probably a good thing that I don't have a woodworking shop here because if I did, I probably wouldn't have this channel. I would just be constantly cutting up wood and making stuff gluing and shaping and all that kind of stuff. But yes, those activities, all that stuff is available here. You can do all that here. You need a little place to rent, you know, to work. God, you can rent a little hole in the wall place for just dollars, you know, pennies on the dollars per month, you know, and set up a shop, set up a ceramic shop, set up a painting shop, do paints. Do, it's all available here. I know there are people here that teach painting, okay? Unfortunately, I don't know of any in Mata. I know some that are up the road in Crescita, but, you know, I may get involved in that as soon as I get my car. 
Now that's only a 20 minute drive from here. You can go up once a week and take painting lessons from uh, a very good person. I'm, I'm not gonna mention her name right now for privacy's sake. But if you wanna know about it, send me an email and here's my email right here. And I'll send you her contact information on Facebook and you can talk to her. But yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of expats that drink. There are a lot, I know expats here that can't wait for a certain time of the day to go to any of the number of bars down on the beach and start drinking. I know some expats here that are real creepers that all they do is stand around and leer at young girls. Those are here. I know a lot of expats that don't do anything but sit around and bitch about life. And then there are expats at work and there are expats like me who engage themselves in activities like I do with my channel and volunteer work and so forth. So yes, it, Chris, it's not any different than the United States. You can do anything you want to here, okay? One of the little things I've kind of gotten into, and this little bag here is full of little beads. And then I have these little, little things that I got here from Amazon. Actually, Stella got me into this. You have these little, this is going to be a cat. And it's all going to be covered with these beads that I stick on here one little piece at a time. What an exciting activity. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for being a subscriber and listening and putting up with my crap. And if you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, bite me. Okay? Merry Christmas to you. Feliz Navidad. If you know somebody that's lonely this weekend, give them a call. Okay? I'd probably be glad to hear from you. Ciao, ciao. Good evening, officer. What seems to be the problem? Are you Mr. Michael Kyle? Yes, I am. Is there something wrong with my kids? No, I'm here to investigate a call we received about a woman screaming at this address. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I can explain that. Huh? I am so embarrassed, excuse me. Here, go make me a sandwich, girl. <laughs> Actually, the call came from within the house. Someone by the name of Katie. That's my five-year-old daughter. Well, it seems she reported a woman screaming, Oh God, oh God, you're killing me. Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just gotta hurt them, show who the boss. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Do me a favor, keep it down. You're talking about the noise, right? Because <laughs> uh, if not, you might as well arrest me for disturbing the peace. <laughs> you know? Okay, okay, okay. All right, officer. Well, everything seems to be okay here. You have a good night. I already did.